Viewers who are familiar with our channel may remember that our channel has shared relevant content about China's Beidou satellite navigation system many times. You can see the relevant links at the bottom of the video, please click to watch. Regarding the Beidou system, many people want to ask a very common question, the GPS system is already capable of global positioning, and it has achieved very high accuracy. So why does China still make great efforts to independently develop the Beidou system? Many viewers may not know that the development of Beidou was actually related to an event that shocked China and the world at that time. It cannot be said that it was entirely because of this event, but it was definitely a cause. So what is it? Okay, welcome to my channel, let's watch today's video together. Just like the history and background of many projects, the birth of Beidou is also part of that era full of grief and indignation. In the Hollywood blockbuster Lord of War, the protagonist uses an ocean freighter to transport weapons, but ends up encountering Interpol on the high seas. Despite the ship's urgent name change and flag switch, Interpol eventually boards the ship for inspection. This plot isn't just a director's wild imagination, it's based on maritime law. On the high seas, if a vessel is suspected of being involved in international crimes, Interpol and naval vessels from various countries have the right to intercept and inspect it, a legal concept known as the right of visitation. This legal principle has a long history, but in modern times, besides United Nations peacekeeping forces and Interpol, the United States is one of the most frequent users of the right of visitation. In 1993, the United States intercepted the Chinese merchant ship Inha in the Arabian Sea, leading to the sensational Inha incident that shocked both domestic and international audiences. Following this incident, Chinese people became more aware that to maintain sovereign independence and integrity, the country needed to become stronger. The first step was to establish its own satellite navigation system, which would prevent being manipulated by others in the vast sea. The Inha incident took place in 1993. In 1994, China officially launched the Beidou Satellite Navigation System project. By 2000, the Beidou Phase 1 system was completed, followed by the Beidou Phase 2 system in 2012. On July 31, 2020, the completion and inauguration ceremony of the Beidou Phase 3 Global Satellite Navigation System was held in Beijing. China became the third country in the world to independently possess a global satellite navigation system. So, why did the Inha encounter difficulties from the United States three decades ago? Why did the diplomat Sha Zukong, who was responsible for the Inha incident at the time, describe it using 17 instances of helplessness? What kind of strategic interactions took place between China and the United States regarding the Inha incident? In the summer of 1993, the Chinese ocean freighter Inha was sailing in the Arabian Sea. This ship had been operating on the route from China to the Persian Gulf for years, transporting light industrial products and raw materials from China and importing agricultural products from the Middle East. By 1993, the Inha had completed dozens of voyages in the Indian Ocean without any mishaps. However, during its voyage in July, it encountered an unexpected disaster. Departing from Tianjin port, the Inha passed through China's Hong Kong, Singapore, Indonesia, and Oman before reaching its final destination, Dubai. During this journey, the ship was loaded with goods such as plastic toys, stationery, metal components, and dyes. Each container was numbered, and each item was registered. However, on July 23, the United States informed China's foreign ministry through diplomats that they had received intelligence suggesting that the Dinha was carrying internationally prohibited chemical weapon materials, specifically thiodiglycol and thionyl chloride, destined for their adversary, Iran. Consequently, the United States requested China to allow an inspection of the vessel or else they would forcibly board and conduct the inspection themselves. Let's begin by introducing thiodiglycol and thionyl chloride. Both of these chemical liquids are highly toxic. The former is a raw material for insecticides and preservatives, and it can also be used as a precursor for mustard gas. During the Iran-Iraq War, Iraq imported large quantities of this material, 
producing mustard gas bombs that caused significant casualties among Iranian troops. Thionyl chloride can be used as an insecticide and herbicide, but it can also be processed into nerve gas. These materials are crucial industrial ingredients, and at that time, Western chemical giants were the largest producers. As a result, these materials were closely monitored by the international community to prevent them from being used for weapon production. While China also produced these substances, it never exported them abroad. Furthermore, China was an advocate and signatory of international conventions banning chemical weapons, making it highly unlikely to intentionally engage in such activities. After receiving the information, China inquired with the China Ocean Shipping Company to verify the situation. The company responded. The INHA's records are clear, and there is no trace of these chemical materials on board. Additionally, the countries it passed through did not load any relevant materials onto the ship. The United States, however, presented its own intelligence, which astonishingly stated. The INHA set sail from Dalian port, carrying two containers bound for Iran, with the code name CSAQ-3101 and 3102, containing thiodiglycol and thionyl chloride. China couldn't help but feel puzzled, the US got even the departure port of the INHA wrong, and yet they were using this so-called inside information to demand an inspection of the vessel. It seemed entirely unreasonable. However, regardless of the authenticity of the situation and without heeding the explanations from the Chinese side, the US was determined to stick to their narrative of China engaging in covert transactions. While negotiations were still ongoing in Beijing, news arrived from the open seas, the INHA had been tracked by the US military. In early August, the INHA was navigating in the Gulf of Oman, and US military helicopters were deployed to fly around the vessel, capturing images of the equipment and personnel on board. On August 3, at noon, U.S. warships approached the Dinha and followed it into the Strait of Hormuz. This information quickly reached China, and the U.S. promptly presented China with three options for resolution. Have the ship return, or allow U.S. personnel to board the ship, or anchor at a nearby Omani port and allow U.S. personnel to conduct an inspection. By this time, the U.S. military had effectively blockaded the Dinha. At 7 p.m. that day, China Ocean Shipping Company, with no other choice, instructed the Dinha to drop anchor and await further instructions in the Strait of Hormuz. The Dinha was now stranded in the vast sea. After anchoring, the ship's engines were shut down, and the entire crew remained on duty. It was the first time a Chinese merchant vessel encountered such a situation on the open sea. Captain Zhang Rud comforted the crew while seeking guidance from authorities in China. Soon after, China's negotiating representatives presented the cargo manifest and other information related to the Dinha, asserting that the U.S. had made a mistake and that the ship could not possibly be carrying chemical materials. However, the U.S. stood firm, insisting that their intelligence was accurate and that an inspection of the vessel was necessary. The summer sun blazed fiercely in the Middle East, and the Dinha was anchored in the midst of the open sea during negotiations. Under the scorching sun, the temperature on the ship's deck soared to over 50 degrees Celsius. Inside the stuffy cabins, temperatures exceeded 30 degrees Celsius during the day, yet the sailors persisted in their work under these challenging conditions. From August 3 to August 13, the diplomatic dispute on the Dinha did not make any progress. In order to maintain the health of the crew, the United States agreed to let the Dinha berth near the coast of the United Arab Emirates. After that, the Dinha will berth here until August 26. During this period, the captain informed the head office that the fresh water and other resources on the ship were running out, and the sickness of the crew increased. Moreover, because of the restriction on bathing, many crew members suffered from skin diseases and their mental state was very bad. The most important thing is that the United States forcibly cut off the GPS navigation of the Dinha at this time, forcing China to submit as soon as possible. The cut-off of the GPS signal and the electronic interference from the US prevented China from obtaining the specific location of the Dinha at sea, 
and the rescue could not be carried out for a while. It birthed in Damamport, Saudi Arabia, and the United States, China, and Saudi Arabia conducted joint inspections. After the decision was made, China sent Sha Zukong, deputy director of the Department of International Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to lead a team to the Middle East. Saudi Arabia also sent people to blockade the Thinha, and could only transport supplies up, without any other contact. On August 29, under the supervision of the Chinese side, the U.S. military sent personnel on board the ship to search, first looking for the two containers, SAC 3101 and 3102, in the intelligence, but they couldn't find them after searching around. At this time, the Americans not only did not suspect that their intelligence was wrong, but felt that the Chinese crew had hidden the two containers, so they wanted to search all the containers on the ship. This move not only made China very angry, but even the representatives of Saudi Arabia felt that it was too aggressive. But the United States insisted on looking for it, and vowed not to give up if it didn't look for it. In desperation, the Chinese sailors led U.S. search personnel to search through more than 600 containers on the ship. American soldiers rummaged through boxes and boxes on the ship, and saw boxes of light industrial products and raw materials, and finally found several metal vats from a container. The U.S. military on the deck cheered, but the Chinese crew members looked very helpless. They told the U.S. military that this was a dye, and it would be destroyed after it was turned on and oxidized. But the U.S. military is even more excited. If the Chinese side refuses to let it go, he insists on doing so. Finally, the U.S. military opened the dye and took it for testing. The results showed that it was really a dye, not those chemical raw materials. Since nothing was found, China demanded that the United States immediately leave the Dinha and sign an agreement with China and Saudi Arabia, declaring to the world that there are no chemical agents on the Dinha. The U.S. representative asked Washington for instructions, and finally, in the face of conclusive evidence and the truth, the White House had to agree to sign. On September 4, 1993, China, the United States, and Saudi Arabia signed the Inha investigation report, confirming that the cargo ship was clean and free of any prohibited items. Afterwards, the Inha continued to Dubai and completed its voyage. When Sha Zukong, deputy director of the Department of International Affairs, later recalled this incident, he said that the United States did not listen to what China said at the time, and even refused reasonable requests. Although the U.S. military did not find any prohibited goods back then, the act itself had damaged the dignity of China's diplomacy, which shows the huge impact this matter had on the minds of that generation. At present, there are four satellite navigation systems in the world, the Global Positioning System GPS, of the United States, the GLONASS Satellite Navigation System GLONASS, of Russia, the Galileo Satellite Navigation System Galileo, of the European Union and the Beidou Satellite Navigation System of China, BDS. The Beidou Satellite Navigation System is a global satellite navigation system independently developed and operated by China. It is the Beidou-1, Beidou-2, and Beidou-3 systems. Today, China's Beidou is moving towards the world, bringing convenient life to all human beings. With the advent of new eras such as the Internet of Things, Big Data, and 6G, the Beidou Satellite Navigation System will usher in a broader space for development. With this as the cornerstone, various developments of human society will usher in a better future under the guidance of Beidou. Okay, that's all for today's sharing, see you next time.